So I just, I thought that this morning um, we would start with the subject of prophets to the nations. Because it may not mean what you think it actually means, okay? So we'll, we'll teach on discernment and uh, uh, in the second half of the morning. But I wanted to take time to talk about what it means to be a prophet to the nations and how every one of us actually has a calling in this regard. So I want us to go to Jeremiah chapter 1. If you have your Bibles, everybody has electronics these days. I preach from electronics, but how many know you should all still have a Bible? I had a friend that said he wanted to invent a um, an app that sounded like the turning of pages. (laughs) So Jeremiah chapter one. This is God speaking to the prophet Jeremiah, and he says this. He says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you as a prophet to the nations. Let me just pause there and say that Jeremiah primarily prophesied to Judah. But then we see later on in his book in chapters 46 through 52, he actually prophesied to a lot of other nations as well. Okay, so it was not just to one nation. He actually prophesied to many different nations. He says, I ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. And then Jeremiah said back to God, ah, ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak for I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, do not say I'm a youth. In other words, God went, shut up, Jeremiah. Do not say I'm a youth for you shall go to all whom I send you and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces. Turn to somebody and say, I'm not afraid of your face. (laughs) Ooh, I saw the faith level having to rise there. Okay. Because you know what? When you go in and you speak for the Lord, sometimes it, it is the faces of men that will cause you to back up. Okay? Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. I prophesied to this young girl one time, and uh, she she was in uh, at Mercy Multiplied, and and most most people that have heard me preach know that I love Mercy Multiplied. It's a it's a transformational home for young women that have had all kinds of life controlling issues, um, drugs, alcohol, severe abuse. severe abandonment, lots of foster homes, and, you know, a lot of different things that have broken them down in life. And um, they come and they spend six, eight months at Mercy Ministries and Mercy Multiplied, and they get the word, they get the spirit, they get an identity, they start understanding who God's made them to be. And so I actually spend four weeks a year going into the different Mercy homes and prophesying over these young women. Because we found about 22 years ago that if they can hear what God thinks about them, it changes everything about their life. Honestly, I mean, because here they think, I'm broken, I'm full of shame, God can't really love me, God can't really use me. And then a stranger that doesn't know any of their issues comes in and just begins to speak to them. And, and some of them have big walls up when I go to prophesy to them. And I remember this one young lady that I was prophesying to, and this, is, this has to do with not being afraid of their faces because um, this, this girl was sitting towards the back and uh, she was dressed kind of in goth. You, do, do you guys understand when I say that? Very dark, dark, dark makeup, dark everything, dark down to her toes, you know, and dark on her expression. And so I was teaching on the prophetic and ministering to a few of the girls, and every time I would make a statement or every time I would call somebody out to prophesy, she would go, real inspiring, okay? And she would roll her eyes, and she would deep sigh, and on and on. And so I was up teaching, and she that's the kind of reaction she was, she was giving me. And so finally she's just like, Ugh. and she gets up, and she storms out, slams the door, goes in the restroom. And I heard the Lord say, just put her out of her misery when she comes back. Go ahead and just prophesy to her as soon as she comes back in and, um, and just settle some things. And so she came in and she plopped down in the back. And I just said, tell you what, can I go ahead and minister to you? And she goes, whatever. 
Yay. Okay. <laughs> so she comes up, and I mean, she's got her hip cocked. She's got her arms crossed. She's glaring at me with every bit of hatred that she possibly could, you know. And so I just close my eyes. You know, sometimes you keep your eyes open. Sometimes, like, you know, I got to hear God, okay? And so before I tell you what the Lord said over her, I'll tell you what she told me later she did when she went into the bathroom. She got up. She walked out into the bathroom. And she said she was walking back and forth in the bathroom, just ranting, ranting to God. I don't believe in this prophecy stuff. I don't believe in any of this stuff. I believe it's a bunch of garbage. She used a different word. I, I believe. She, <laughs> I, matter of fact, I don't even believe you're real. All my life, I've asked you question after question, and you've never once answered me. If you're real, God, you better prove it to me today. And she came in and sat down. So, of course, I had no idea that that had happened. But God did. This is what I love about the prophetic. So the very first words out of my mouth were, the Lord said, my daughter, you say, you've asked me question after question that, that I've never answered. And because I'm God, I don't have to prove myself to you. But because I love you, I will prove myself to you. And honestly, the rest of the prophecy made no sense to me because what it was, it was God going down her list and answering her questions. And so when I got done prophesying, she grabbed the mic out of my hand, which is always terrifying. <clears throat> and she said, she turned around to the group and she goes, you guys, I just found out God is real. Understand this, everything we do is to that goal. It's to that, it's to make Jesus real. Come on, how many, how many are believers, but you need Jesus to be made real to you sometimes? Come on. And she gave her heart to Jesus that day. This girl that was angry, this girl that was broken, this girl that was hard, the prophetic went right in as a key and just opened up her closed up heart, and she lives her life wide open for Jesus now. Because she had an encounter with a God that knows her. Amen.